everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have sort of a different video for you here today. I had sort of ran this past my community and some of my other videos and people seem to want to see it. So I thought today I would show off my press-on collection. So these are all different press-ons that I've personally made. This isn't even half of it. Most of them are in these little like um, jewelry baggies. And I just thought I would go through each set, kind of talk about what I learned from the set, what was my inspiration, so that you can see my journey from where I started out with press-ons to where I am at now. Um, I've been doing my own nails, gel extensions for probably five years now. I started kind of like right before COVID hit and then really got into it over COVID. That's where I was spending a lot of time watching YouTubers, learning from them how to do gel. I mostly work in gel. I mostly work in Gel X with the pre-made tips full cover, but I have used poly gel before with regular nail tips or dual forms, but the main thing I use at this point is gel. These ones here are a set of press-ons that I made for a video probably a month ago. I just popped them on so I could have something on my hand. I don't have anything on this hand because I actually use my left hand for modeling new sets that I've made. Enough rambling, let's go ahead and get into this tour. All right, so I really need a better system of storing these, but this is one of my very early sets. These were when I was really getting into cat eye gels. I think this is a mixture of like a Born Pretty jelly gel overlaid on top of a cat eye gel, but I was going for like an elven look. That's why these have the gold design. Overall, I think it's cute. You know, my um, my hand painting wasn't as good at that point. So like here you can see the details aren't as nice as I personally would like it at this point, but it's cute. Again, quite simple, going for like an elvish magical look. When I really started making press on nails, I was mostly doing very simple designs, maybe like one standout accent design, maybe a few charms here and there. Speaking of which, here's another pretty simple look. I was going for that like blush design, that blush trend. Okay, so this was just, like I said, a fun little blush set. I don't remember the exact blushes I was using. I think one of these is the Gao line. It's off of Amazon and I do actually really like their jelly polishes. That's what is in the center here for this blush nude color. I was not using any sort of like painting gels at that point, so I was using just a regular white polish for these lines, which is why they're a little bit um, thick. I was still refining my line work, but overall I thought these were pretty cute. Simple little blush set. This one is another really simple set, so I'll probably only show one nail from this. This was just a little like ombre design that I did. This was the accent thumb. And here were the other nails. Now the ombre, and I'm perfectly fine with showing this, is really bad. Um, I don't know if you can see here how blotchy it is. Towards the edge, the color is really uneven. On the free edge, the white is really uneven. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up quite as much as you can see in person, but the ombre is just not good. It is not smooth at all. And I've definitely gotten better. I think also the product to use makes a big difference. The more recent ombres I've been doing are with higher quality gels that have a more consistent color payoff and also a better consistency in general in terms of how liquid they are and how sheer for doing ombres. So definitely something I've learned along the way is how understated an ombre can be. Very difficult to do with the right technique, even though it looks pretty simple in the finished product. All right, up next, I was really proud of this set. This is kind of one of the first sort of 3D sets that I did. And it's just these little cinema roll nails here. They're little, a little dirty. Sorry about that. I, I noticed matte coats tend to collect dust and fuzz a little bit more, but here they are. It's a sweet little cinema roll set. Now these ears, I just poly gel. So I had painted the base of the nail, put on the little poly gel ears and a white poly gel. I think it's the McCart white and then painted on his little face. 
and did a really simple design for the rest. But I do still very much love this nail, especially I might even go back and redo this design because I just think it's so cute. I love cinema roll. I love everything Sanrio too. Okay. And speaking of character inspiration, this was a set I did. These aren't exactly in order because honestly, I don't remember the exact order that I made all these nails. Um, but I think this was earlier on. And this design was inspired by Disney's Tangled, which is probably my favorite Disney movie. This thumbnail here, it's meant to represent like her, her crown. This little sun charm here I thought was perfect for her little symbol, her sun symbol. So yeah, this was just a cute little Disney's Tangled inspired set. And again, this was pretty early on, so this was a very complex set for me. I was pretty proud of how it turned out. I liked every nail, I think, but this one. Now, knowing some of the new techniques I know, um, this one would probably end up looking a little bit different. But if you take that one out, um, I do really like these ones here. And then this was my first attempt at sort of like the mermaid shell trend with the 3D shell design. It's definitely not my best work, um, but I did do a full set for this. If you can't tell already, I have always really loved the chrome look. This 3D shell was not it. Um, the lines are pretty uneven. They've got some wiggling to them. There's some bubbles in the 3D gel, which that does happen. That still happens to me today. Sometimes I'll get one or two bubbles, which I don't think is a huge issue. The neatest work here with these ones so i am really proud of how far i've come with my 3d line work and my application of these like 3d shell designs and then if you look at my chrome application here you have some dimples that's because i did not put on a nice even coat of top coat before adding the chrome powder over it and then this one i had too much excess chrome powder which meant instead of it looking very shiny and mirror like you get kind of this sparkly effect so i've definitely learned a lot since this design probably four years ago about chrome application and 3d work so that same time period where i did that last mermaid set was when i really really got into trying to up my nail art game. So I did this set here. Here it is, I started working with chains. I started working with some like liner gels. I started using the caviar beads more to my advantage to outline charms and things like that. So yeah, looking back on this, that <laughs> fade is awful. Oh my gosh. And again, partially due to the products I was using very thick, um, not really meant to be faded like that and I was using an ombre brush instead of a sponge or something like that. Not my best work, but at the time I was really happy with these. I liked the overall design and aesthetic, but definitely a lot I would change um, if I redid this set now. So this collection and most of the nails that are going to come after are actually from this past year. And what I mean by that is like last year in the summer, I got really, really, really into nails again. I'd been doing my own designs, not really saving them since 2020. In 2022, 2023 is when I started saving my press-on tip because I thought maybe I would want to document my progress, start selling press-ons on Etsy. Here though is where I really started collecting my designs, both to upload and to make content with. So this case is one of the first kind of like collections that I made for myself and I am really happy with almost all of these designs. I'll show you here. I do want to get more of these cases so that I can put all of my nail tips on display. So I started here with kind of like a magical girl look. I still really like these nails. These are up on my Etsy but they're just a cute little pink and purple magical girl set. This one was meant to be sort of like the blue version, something a little bit less cutesy, but still in the same realm of like magic. Really like these two together even, I think are very nice. This one was just a fun little spring set. I did this as part of a PR piece for Model 1s. Same with the set here, so both of these are using a, an art palette that they had. 
I think I was trying too hard to make something with the palette and showcase all of the colors rather than making something that, uh, you know, I really liked. So I think this set's cute, but I probably would have done something a little bit different with the colors in hindsight. I do like this one though. I think this is a fun one. These two were inspired by a video game that I play. Actually, it's called Valorant and they came out with the prettiest set of skins. This is a game where you play five on five. It is a first person shooter, but their guns and knives can have different designs to them. They came out with this bundle. It was called the Ignite Bundle, and these were inspired by those skins for the knives and the guns. It was like Phoenix themed, and they had a red version and a purple version, and I just thought it was so pretty. I really liked these. I think the design looks very cohesive. This is where I really started coming into my own when it comes to my design work and making sure that everything looks cohesive. But yeah, big fan of these ones. Here are some darker sets. This is one that was really inspired by these snake charms that I had ordered. I think I got them off of Timu. I, I really don't have space to link everything I use for all of these sets, but if you do see something and you really want to know what I'm using, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll try to find whatever product it is. This is like a tattoo inspired set. Um, the chrome mark here is a little shoddy and I think I have a much better handle on how to do chrome, how to clean up the edges, how to make it look very nice and clean. So. That's a testament to kind of how I've progressed. This one was another video game inspired set. This is inspired by Diablo 4. So let me see if I can take this off. So I had a lot of friends who were really into the Diablo game. Diablo 4 came out after years of no new Diablo content, but everybody was playing it. I'm not a huge fan of Diablo. So I was doing nails in the background and just kind of hanging out while they played, but this one I really liked. It's hard to see on camera here, but it's meant to be the horn of one of the characters, Lilith. What I did was I put down a 3D gel pretty thickly and I put chrome over it and then I painted over all of that with like a black jelly polish so that only the highest points would stick through. So yeah, I thought that was a, a cool set. And then this set was my first take on the bubble nail trend. So at some point, the bubble nail was really popular. I think it was popularized in Korea, but you actually take gel and you cure the top layer, leave the center uncured. You can stick a little syringe in there and add some bubbles and then you cure everything and the bubbles stay in place. So this was meant to be like a lime margarita set. I used some little lime stickers, some little leaves, I did the whole ice look with some chrome, some aurora chrome, little 3D lime nail art. Um, yeah, I really liked these ones. I think these turn out really fun. This one is another earlier 3D design. This little guy here is called a Pachamari. He's from another video game that I used to play called Overwatch. He's like this little onion creature. I don't know, very cute. There are a bunch of different versions of him in the game. But I painted this set here with his color scheme, did the little 3D Pachamari. And this is supposed to just say onion in Japanese. Um, I don't know. I looked it up Google Translate, so who knows how accurate it is. And I do not know how to write in Japanese. I really just try to copy what I saw. So I'm sorry if I butchered it, but that was my attempt. And then these two were just a little butterfly inspired sets. I had seen kind of similar designs going around that were really textured, lots of charms, lots of different designs. And so I went with a black one with this spider gel. This is my first time using spider gel. I really liked it. I think it's a fun way to get, you know, these really thin designs here, these really thin lines. I had some fun butterfly stamping plates that I used for like these butterflies here. And then these butterflies, like these wings, these are all 3D nail molds. So this was kind of my first foray into 3D nail molds. These are the really shallow ones that you like put the polish on and scrape away. But yeah, I, I thought this one turned out pretty good. I liked it. Oh, and I 3D molded this flower here with a 3D mold. 
Previously, all of these charms have just been ones that I've like purchased, aside from this that I sculpted and this, but this was the first time using like 3D molds. This was another version of that set. This was inspired by Olivia Rodrigo's Vampire. So I went with a red and black theme. I had these really cute butterflies that I wanted to test out. I had these little moon charms that I thought fit perfectly. This is a stamping plate. Same with this and this. These here are stickers in the background. I wish I could say I hand painted these, but they're very tiny, tiny details. These are water decal stickers. I lost a charm. This is before I really learned how to properly affix my charms so that they wouldn't go anywhere. This was a like metal rose. And then these are just chains, caviar beads. Um, I really like these two looks. I think they go well together also. So yeah, this was again, kind of like the first collection of press on nails that I really wanted to save, display, so I put them in this fun case. I should get more of these though, because I still have tons of nails to show you that all need to go in a case. Um, up next is a, another Kirby set. If you are somebody who watches my channel, I just recently did a 3D Kirby design and it was kind of like the version two of the set here. Here's this one, here's this version. So this right here is a Kirby charm that I had actually purchased. I did mold the cloud out of some textured gel. And then this is another charm along with the same wings that I actually used for the recent Kirby set. I do still really like this design, actually. I like the Aurora Chrome lines, the little ombre here that I redid in my most recent set. It's similar. This one I would say is a little bit more understated. I do like it though. This was another sort of like rainbow set. I was feeling very rainbow inspired that summer. I think it's super summery, super cute. So what I did was I took some jelly polishes. These are a collection by Borton Pretty. It's their summer jellies. And I did a little ombre, did some 3D clouds, added some charms. And here I took a white polish and I put down sort of like that wispy effect underneath and then layered the jelly polishes over it so that you could see some of that white peeking through. So you get this like smoky effect almost. And then I went around it with the chrome detailing. And I, yeah, I'm still really happy with the set. I would wear this today. I like it a lot. Up next, I have another little cinema roll set. So these were really made because of this nail here, the thumbnail. I had seen someone else, I think, I think it was Dreamy Little Nails, but she had used this really fun mold that makes these little 3D shakers. So I purchased them myself right here. It's this little 3D shaker mold. And what's so cool about it is it's got a hollow inside so that you can fill this little, it's really a Tomogachi mold, I'm pretty sure. It's like a little egg shape with this hollow inside. You can fill it with little sequins and caviar beads, whatever you want. I cured a layer, like a thin layer of clear gel, popped it on over, and sealed it in with more gel to make this little cinema roll shaker. And then this charm I just glued on top of the, the 3D charm here. So yeah, I thought this was such a fun design. So yeah, um, I am really happy with this one too. I loved how this turned out. I went for a different design on every nail, which is something that I hadn't really been doing up until that point too much, but I do like the end results. So right after that design, I made this design as sort of a pair meant to go together almost. This is a Karomi set, a little more dark than the other. Instead of the blue and the white, I went for pink and black, which is one of my favorite color combinations. And I did the same little shaker design here. See, this is a little Karomi shaker. I used darker caviar beads and some pink sequins inside and put the little Karomi charm. Same sort of theme going on here. The crosses, with the bows, and the, the lattice work. Oh, but all of these charms, aside from this little metal one here, I 3D molded. So this one, this one, these two hearts, um, 
this one oh and aside from this little curly um all of those i use 3d molds for i do like how customizable 3d charm molds are which is why i have a ton of them so in case i ever need something of a specific color i can just pull that out and make my own charm instead of having to go buy them and wait so yeah i'm really happy with this set too and when barbie came out i made this set these are actually two designs in one i experimented with like some stamping plates to do an underside design as well it's cute it's it's not my favorite mostly because i think i don't know maybe it's not really my style personally i go for more understated colors and these are very like vibrant pinks hand painted the bee here for the barbie which i really thought turned out pretty well ignore the fuzz so yeah this one's cute not really my style but um i i wanted to do something for the barbie movie okay and it wouldn't be a summer without mermaids so this is one of my first like mermaid beach themed sets that i made this was inspired by that trending water look where you take a blue gel and you overlay it with like a milky white gel and then you put little dots of clear into the milky white and it disperses and it looks like water really like that technique i think it emulates the look of water perfectly so i went with a little beach design here as you can see at that point i was still learning how to properly isolate chrome i think i figured it out the best way to do it in my opinion is by putting down a top coat curing completely the top coat buffing away the shine then putting down your 3d gel whatever you're going to use to affix the chrome then putting on the chrome powder it really does not stick to a buffed out top coat but yeah i had a lot of fun with this set here and this little shell design i redid the shell design a couple times because i actually filmed it as one of my early tutorials if you follow me on instagram and tiktok i used to do a lot more short form content i would do like minute minute and a half tutorials which i still have to do some of but right now i'm kind of focusing on long form content here on youtube and trying to get out more of that so speaking of mermaids so these are my aquarium nails this was my kind of first attempt at doing this sort of style of nail i was really inspired by Dash Nails on Instagram. She does the most gorgeous aquarium nails and I wanted to give her method a try. So these I made to be very literal, they're mermaid ocean aquarium nails. And I've got like a little mermaid charm in the actual aquarium nail itself. Here's the actual aquarium nail tip. It's just filled with charms and baby oil, and I sculpted all of it out of gel polish, just different hard gels. Yeah, I'm really happy with this design, how it turned out. I also used the like little bubble technique here to create a seafoam look, made a custom glitter mix. Um, I actually have a full work with me video on my YouTube if you want to check out this design. Okay, and this is probably the set that I'm most proud of. So this is my recreation of Dreamy Little Nails, super viral Sakura nails. I think the way that she used resin jewelry making techniques was just genius to make these little petals. So if you haven't seen that design yet, every single petal you see here, these are all handmade. I took wire and I wrapped it around different implements to create the little petals, molded them into the petal shape, and then dipped them in resin, and then hand painted on the little ombre. So overall, this set took me, I think like 15 hours, because you have to do all of the wire work. You have to dip each separate petal into a gel or into a resin, let that cure, then paint on the colors and the ombre, let that cure. I went with like a blue to gold foil to kind of mimic like the sky and sakura petals floating through the sky. Then you have to take all of the petals and actually affix them to the nail. Make these little wire stamens here, these little wire branches. Yeah, it's um, it's quite the process, but I love how they turn out. They just look so delicate and luxurious and I'm a big fan. I do want to revisit this technique 
I want to do like different flowers with it. It's just, it's so time consuming and honestly quite daunting because of that. But if it's something that you all would like to see, um, let me know and I will try to make a video. But definitely check out Dreamy Little Nails video on this. She has a full tutorial on how to achieve this look. And I think she is such a creative, awesome nail artist. I really gain a lot of inspiration from her. So definitely check that out. So this one here is a Rococo themed set. This is also one that's pretty popular on my Etsy. All of the details here, aside from this angel, are hand painted. So all of the little filigree designs, these little swirls and the Rococo patterns, these are all hand painted. I did the wing with a 3D texture gel. The charms are not done by me. These are just ones that I purchased. The little flower though I did hand paint and put inside this little frame with some 3D gel on top. But yeah, I, I do really love the look of this one. It's a lot of work to do because of all of the different elements, I will say. Like you have all the chrome here, you have the 3D wings here, fixing all the charms, getting all of these lines hand painted and perfect. They're not perfectly symmetrical, but I try to get as close as possible being symmetrical. So yeah, this is another favorite on Etsy and honestly one of my personal favorites as well. This here was a fun like toxic set. It was actually inspired by another Valorant character. It's going for like an alien look almost. A lot of different techniques I'd wanted to try out here. So this is one of my first and only airbrushed sets. Um, shortly after I'd made this set with an airbrush, I had learned kind of the dangers of airbrushing. You really don't want to be airbrushing with gel and acetone. I had seen a bunch of people doing it through short form content. And so I thought it was perfectly fine. I did wear a mask, but even so, I've heard it's extremely dangerous to inhale aerosolized gel. So I've no longer been using my airbrush. Um, I'm trying to figure out alternatives. I do have some acrylic airbrush paint that I could use, but I just haven't gotten back to it. However, I will say it does give such a pretty ombre. Like that ombre is so smooth, so nice. Same with this here, this Aurora look. These are meant to look like, I don't know, eggs, something, something textured. So I layered a neon green, underneath a glow in the dark green so this set actually glows in the dark i do have a short for it that i can link so you can see the full effect but it glows under black light and it glows in the dark it's not my normal style um but i do i do like more edgy looks sometimes this one here was just a simple little cutesy set of money nails i don't know i'd gotten some money stickers and i thought i wanted to use them I had these charms that I wanted to use as well. So this is just a fun little money set. None too fancy, just some charms, some ombre, some 3D chrome work, some stickers. Yeah, cute. I would still wear these. Come fall, I made more aquarium nails. The overall design I would say is pretty simple. I wasn't going for anything too crazy. Ugh, they're so dirty because they're matte top coated and I think there's something in that baggie. Whoopsie, that's okay. So these are my fall aquarium nails. Filled this one here just with some maple leaf sequins. These don't move quite as much um, just because I think I put actually too many of the maple leaf sequins. So they kind of get stuck together. Takes a second for them to start moving. So I have learned from this in the future, I would put fewer of the maple leaf sequins, maybe more of the caviar beads to get things moving around because they just get stuck together <laughs> and kind of clump up in there. So definitely a learning curve with the aqua nails. I did the hand painted leaves here that I thought were pretty cute. Some sweater designs for just a, a simple fun fall set. And then last year, I'm really proud of this. I entered a McCart nail art competition just just on a whim, um, they were doing a Halloween competition. And so I made these aquarium nails here. This was a pink Halloween set and I really tried to go all out. So I pulled out all of the stops for the set, pulled out all of the different techniques I was seeing going around. I made these little ghosts with blooming gel. I did some hand painted art here for the spider web and the claw marks. I drilled some holes and did these little piercing jump rings. I love the look of these. I want to do some more of these soon. So here's the aqua nail for my Halloween set. I had these cute little pink sequins of like pumpkins and spiders that I thought would be perfect for it. 
and then I wanted to do the bat French that was really trending last year and then I also wanted to do the 3d spider that was trending too here's this guy overall I am still really proud of this set um, I actually won the competition which is awesome they gave me a voucher for a bunch of nail products that I was able to buy so I am like stocked for life on McCart nail glue which is one of my absolute favorites I do really like their four-in-one solid glue for doing my 3d molding so um, I really appreciate the opportunity that they put out there and everybody who voted for me in that competition. For that same competition, I actually made another set that I really like. This one did not gain as much popularity as the other one did, but I personally think I might like it better. It was an Edgar Allan Poe inspired set. I had been watching The Fall of the House of Usher, which, oh, there's the pinky. There we go. Um, I had been watching The Fall of the House of Usher, which is now one of my favorite shows. It's definitely not for kids, um, but I love the way that it integrates a bunch of different Poe stories into one kind of cohesive narrative. So this was inspired by that. You have the Raven, Nevermore. I tried to do like a gothic castle. I did recently pick up some nail molds, some nail molds that I think will make this much easier because I had hand painted the arches and then try to go over with like a 3d embossing gel to create some depth this bird skull i am super proud of because this is hand sculpted so i used poly gel and some 3d gel to make this bird skull then i hand painted it just with some um some bone colors to give like a, a nice realistic look added the blood yeah i'm really happy with this nail i love the way it turned out so yeah i i love this set Honestly, I like it, I think, even more than the pink nails, but that's just my aesthetic. Last of the Halloween sets, I promise, I made these. And these are kind of gross. Um, I love them, though, honestly. So this is all hand sculpted. So all of these I did myself using just like a 3D gel, that 4-in-1 solid glue. I hand painted the eyes. This is just like a jelly red color to do the blood effect. Hand painted some details on the heart. I'm also really proud of these ones. They're, again, they're gross, but I love how they turned out. Um, I have, I feel like two modes. I love cutesy stuff and then I love really dark stuff, which kind of is maybe contradictory, but I am really proud with how these ones came out and how realistic they look. I do have a new 3D heart mold though. That I'm excited to try because this took me forever trying to figure out how to get this to look somewhat anatomically correct. A lot of these nails, uh, these later nail sets, you can tell when I made them and I can remember the timeline because of the themes. So this was a holiday aquarium nail set. I went with pink because like I said, I like cutesy things too. So I just did these pink and silver snowflake nails, did the ice look, on the bottom with the pink ombre and another aquarium nail. I had these little snowflake charms that I wanted to put to use. Overall, I thought these were cute. They're not my favorite actually, but I do think they're cute. And these snowflakes are all, all these designs are hand painted. So I did all the line work there. And you can definitely tell, like if I compare this to some of those earlier sets, my line work has improved so, so much. For this set, I really had wanted to challenge myself to do some more hand painting. So I did like a sort of a traditional Christmas design with some holly. Did the little Christmas ornament trend that was going around where you do like a little ornament design and then put some gel over the top so it's bubbly in 3D. I used like a little gold sequin, a snowflake sequin to give it that 3D effect. I do think the hand-painted design comes out nicely. I'm pretty happy with this. I think it's a cute set. It's a little bit more understated, a little bit more subtle, but I do like the way it looks. All right, up next I have a Slytherin-inspired set. So over the holidays, I had thought about doing a Harry Potter series where I do a nail set for each of the Hogwarts houses. This was an idea inspired by, I think it's Ju Nail. I will try to link their channel below, but they're a Korean nail artists that I love watching. They do really pretty, intricate nails with lots of charms. And so I had thought 
I would also do a Hogwarts themed design. Um, it didn't work out. I only got Slytherin and Ravenclaw before I kind of like ran out of time and had other nail art ideas that I wanted to do. But this is mostly inspired by these really fun sword charms here that I got. I think these are just so cool. I added a chain to it to add it to the kind of like medieval look. Now I know technically the sword is supposed to be the sword of Gryffindor, but I included it here because it was the sword of Gryffindor that killed the basilisk, which is why it is part of my Slytherin set. And then this is actually version two of the Slytherin set. So I did two different versions. I really liked the first one, but I wanted one with some more hand painting. So this one here is more in line with like the snake theme. I used the bubble effect for snake skin, hand painted the Slytherin crest, the Slytherin S, did some hand painted filigree design here with like a metallic gel. Still kept that same chain. And then I tried to do a dark mark. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. The dark mark is more like the book's dark mark versus um, the movie dark mark. I tried to do the movie dark mark. It was just way too much detail. Couldn't get it correct. So I went with the book dark mark and a little skull charm. And I think it turned out very nicely. Here are my Ravenclaw nails. So after the Slytherin set, I did attempt a Ravenclaw set. I actually do have a whole paint with me. For this i just haven't posted it um it is in the archives i just haven't gone around to it this one is a little bit more simple so i wasn't even sure in the first place if i really wanted to post it i wasn't sure who would want to watch it it's this dark blue and bronze chrome ravenclaw look complete with an eagle that i hand painted and then kind of flubbed the chrome because i was attempting some different techniques for isolating chrome. I really liked how the eagle turned out, so I didn't want to redo it, but the chrome, as you can see, had a lot of fallout. So not my best work there with the chrome. Ah, you live and you learn, you know? If anyone does want to see this design, let me know. Um, I do have the footage. I'll try to edit it and get it out. But yeah, this is my Ravenclaw look. So we are kind of finally catching up to my recent nail designs. Um, this one here was my first work with me video here on YouTube. This is that cute little pink coquette set. I do all this hand painted detail here. This is a line from one of my favorite poems just because of the story behind the poem. It's called the nymph's reply to the shepherd. All of this detail here aside from the lace, that's a foil. The rest of it though is hand painted and then these are some 3D charms. Um, you can see this video here on YouTube. I'll try to put the card like right here so you can watch it if you'd like. I love the set. I'm a big fan of pink and green as a color scheme. This one here is a set that I made for Lunar New Year this year. Um, some of you might know I was adopted from China along with my sister. So even though I am Chinese in ethnicity, I don't know as much about the culture as I think I would have liked to. Um, not for the sake of my parents trying, trust me, they sent us to Chinese camp and everything. <laughs> so during the summer, I would learn things like how to paint with inks. I learned how to do a proper Chinese tea ceremony. Learned a little teeny tiny bit of Chinese. I learned how to do like the Chinese fan dance and the ribbon dance and did some Tai Chi. So I did get a lot of like surface culture experience with the Chinese culture through that camp over the summer, um, over the span of a few years. But I, I do regret personally, now that I'm older, not really looking as much into the culture as I could have when I was younger, maybe learned the language, but um, I do still have an appreciation though for the art style. And so I did these Lunar New Year nails. This dragon is hand painted chrome detail is added over the top of just like a, a 3d gel i did it in layers to get this this look here and overall i'm really happy with how it turned out this was a fun set i really liked all the different elements and how they came together in the end so the last few sets that i have are actually all my most recent videos here on youtube black swan nails he's here using my 3d nail molds 
I'm not gonna pull these out because I do have a whole video on all of these sets here that you can check out on my channel and I would really appreciate it if you do. Um, but these are the black swan nails. These are my purple butterfly Y2K nails. Big fan of these. Um, this video, I was surprised actually it did super well on YouTube. I don't know exactly what happened or like why it got so popular, um, but I, I appreciate that it did. I do really like this set. These I made recently with some Madame Glam polishes that I was sent. These are like a Chinese porcelain inspired nail design. And these are my Kirby nails that have been really popular as of late, which I appreciate so much. So many people have gone and showed love on that video. And if you found me from that video, um, leave a little, a little star down below. I'd love to hear who kind of like found my channel off of that video, but all of these are 3D molded. If you want to see how I do it, make sure to watch that video. I love the way this little cake slice turned out. I am pretty proud of that. And last but not least is this peach set that I just did with the Mayo Peach Collection and some other products I got from Sweetie Nail Supply. Full video for that is up on my channel if you want to see how I did this look. But yeah, that is it. Um, so if I pull all of this out, so here are all the different nail sets that I've done kind of over the past couple years, the ones that I've saved at least. There are more that I haven't even saved. Um, but I, I like that I did just so I can kind of document my progress, my journey, how far I've come with my nail designs. A lot of them I'm really proud of, a lot of them I'm proud of in that I've learned since then and I've kind of improved the way that I do things. I really appreciate everybody for stopping by, for checking out this video. Um, if you like my content, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. I am so happy that I've started this channel and gotten to meet so many awesome people and kind of connect about nails. I don't have a lot of friends in real life who do nails, so it's always nice to talk to like-minded people. Um, please leave comments. I love reading your comments. I try to respond to everyone uh, when I have the time. I am going to get a Discord up and running soon as well. If any of you would like to join that, I will definitely share it once I have that going and posted. But thank you again so much for being here. I, I don't know how to explain how much I do really appreciate it. I love doing art and I love that I get to share that now with so many of you. So yeah, um, enough of this happy stuff. Thank you and I will see you next time. Bye.